Hi everybody, this is Catherine, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in NBA 2K22. Um, this is not the version like the PS5, so it's not the next gen version. It's a, like kind of an upgrade of the uh, 2K21. Uh, it's still running fine on computer. So I will show you like how to optimize your Windows for uh, uh, NBA, and after that we will go inside of the game to show you what parameter that you can change to have like most of FPS, but still getting a nice quality graphic. So first of all, let's search for your game mode. Make sure that your game mode is at on. If you have the latest version of Windows now, game mode is pretty good. For the past six months, honestly, now I recommend to use game mode. It helped a lot with um, multi-core processor like a Ryzen one to make sure that the Windows will allocate the best cores on your CPU to run the game. So really cool feature that you should use. For the Xbox game bar, I don't recommend it. Uh, it's creating like, first of all, stuttering. Also, it's creating some sort of like bug sometimes in game artifacts, stuff like that. So make sure that this one is at off. Make sure also you remove like all your different overlays uh, in a Discord overlay, Radian overlay, NVIDIA overlay. It will help you with the stability of your game. After that capture, make sure that your background recording is at off and your recorded audio is at off. If you have an NVIDIA card series 1000 or more recent, you will have an option called Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling. Make sure that you search for graphic setting in your search bar. Open this. Make sure that you put this one at on and restart your computer. It will help you if you have like a low end or an old mid range computer. Um, it helped a little bit with the bottleneck. You can like expect three to five percent boost in your FPS. And if you have like a recent modern computer, you will not see any difference with this one. Another thing that I recommend, uh, write energy, go to your power option. Make sure that you run the balance one or the air performance one. Um, don't run like power saver or other that coming with your driver, your, I don't know if you have like a Dell laptop, a Asus laptop. The thing is sometimes, um, they give you a profile, for example, a uh, eco mode or power saver. So you're going to make sure that you're saving your battery on your laptop. But when you plug on the wall, you want to switch it. Normally it should change automatically but sometimes it stay at like the eco mode so make sure that you're running the balance or the high performance and if you, if you are using a laptop to make sure that you're using the maximum power of your gpu and cpu one more thing is the uh drivers so make sure that you have the latest radian driver nvidia uh intel also if you're using the igpu on your cpu make sure that they're you're going on their website they have dedicated driver for uh, video games so really important to have the latest one all the big games that when they come out uh you always have like some fix from radian nvidia or whatever uh to make sure first of all that you have optimized driver and also if you have issue with crashes uh ultra widescreen and stuff like that it will help you a lot so now let's go inside of the game so now in the game, let's go to feature, after that, video settings. So first of all, make sure that your display monitor is the proper one. So with the resolution and the amount of Hertz. Uh, another thing is your display resolution. For me, by default, it was at 1080p, so it didn't took my um, uh, native resolution. So really important here, if you don't want to downscale your game randomly. So just look at your display resolution and make sure that you run native. For the window mode, I recommend to play full screen in this game. Borderless was causing me stuttering and also drop in my FPS, so that's why I'm using it in full screen. For anti-aliasing uh, quality and level, I recommend to put the minimum 1 and by default it will be 0 at quality. Uh, first of all, it will help you a lot with your FPS and second of all, your image will look a lot better. Yes, you will have aliasing, but I feel like in this game when you put anti-aliasing, uh, everything is too blurry. So that's why I'm putting those one like this. So nice boost and a better image quality. Refresh rate. Uh, make sure that you're running the refresh rate of your monitor. For me, it's 170. So really depend on your monitor. It's a little bit weird. They're telling me to not using it when I apply it. Uh, they asking me if I'm not sure it can cause issue. I didn't have any issue and I'm running the game smoothly at 167 FPS locked because I want to stay in my free sync range. So for the vertical sync, I'm not using it because, like I said, I'm running my free sync uh, on my monitor and GPU. 
Uh, you can also use G-Sync if you want. Uh, if you don't have those options, I recommend to use the vertical sync. Put the, this one at on. It will help a lot with tiering. And uh, it will, you know, vertical sync is creating a little bit of input lag, but in a game like this, you will not see it. It's more like if you're playing like a competitive uh, first person shooter that uh, I don't recommend to use vertical sync. But in this game, it's fine. After that, go to advanced setting, press 2. So now the shader detail. I did a couple of comparison over here. Between high and medium, I didn't see any difference. So uh, you're getting a little bit more FPS and you will not see it in your image quality. Low, it's a little bit too low. You will Your image will decrease a lot. So I recommend to go with medium. Shadow detail level, if you go ultra to medium, you can get a nice 7% boost in your FPS. After that, you can put low and off. If you're playing on a really low-end computer, you can removing it. But this game without shadow is a bit bland. So I don't really recommend it. It's more like if you're struggling with your FPS, definitely go on the shadow. Like lower it. This is a big... Uh, it takes a lot of resources to run it. Texture detail quality. This one is not very... Uh, uh, important uh, it really depends on your vram on your video card if you have like 4 gig and more go with i 3 gig and more uh medium and less than 3 gig like uh, 2 gig or 1 gig of vram go with low player detail level i'm playing at i you can gain like 2% at medium and 1% at low. So that's why I'm going at I. It's not like a, a big booster over here when you lower it. So I recommend to go with I. You're seeing the player. You know, when you play basketball, you always like look at the players. We will lower everything else um, that are not necessarily in the game, like the crowd. So for this one, it's not worth it. Go with I. The crowd detail, though, uh, this one can help you a lot. If you go high to low, you can get a nice 8% boost in your FPS. And if you're removing it, you can go at 10%. So this one, really important also, if you're struggling with your FPS. Me, I'm playing at medium, but uh, really depends what, what you want to do with it. Media people detail, uh, high to medium, I'm getting a nice 3% boost. Medium to low, 1%. And when I'm removing it, another 1%. So that's why I'm staying at medium, but again, depending where you are in the game, uh, with your uh, with your the amount of FPS that you want to have, it really depends uh, what you need to change. So if you're struggling, you're like like 35 and you want your 60, definitely media people and crowd should be at low. Air detail, this one I'm putting this one at low. Uh, it stabilized a lot my FPS for a reason that I don't know on my laptop. So. Their detail, you're not necessarily focused on it when you, you know, when you're playing basketball. So that's why I'm putting this one at low, and uh, it will uh, get you will have more stability in your FPS. You will not necessarily get like a boost when you go high to low, like maybe one or two FPS, but uh, it's more like everything will be more smoother. After that, ambient occlusion, volumetric lighting, and anti-aliasing temporal. Those one at off, you will gain a nice eight percent boost in your FPS. Depth of field and motion blur, put those one at off. It's not, you will not gain have FPS, but it's, it's effect that you not necessarily want to use in any game. Depth of field, it really depends, but motion blur for, for sure, don't use that uh, if you want like a clear image when you're playing. Bloom, I'm removing it. You will get like one to two FPS. Not a huge deal. It's more because I don't like this effect. Floor reflection, I'm keeping this one. Again, if you're playing on a laptop, Without like, a, I don't know, you're using like an iGPU or something like that. You will need to remove it again. But the, the game will look bland without the floor reflection. So for me, this one is really important for your image quality. So that's why I'm staying at on. Mirror reflection, I recommend to put this one at off. It will help you with your uh, FPS, like to stabilize them. Buffer cut and max anisotropy, honestly, almost everyone can like run the 16. So don't touch it. Leave it by default. And um, computer shader and shader preload stay at on. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my NBA 2K22 guide. If you have any questions, just come in in the YouTube section. Post me your rigs, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.